Hey guys, I'm Dr. McFarland and I want to give you another update this week on the new studio build for 2022. It was a long week full of lots of drywall and lots of dust on the floor here in the studio. Things will definitely be deadened a little bit once I get a couch in here. I have some panels right back there as you can see that are about five foot four inches and those will go in the corners. I have done a few hours of research checking out Prime Acoustics, also GIK acoustic panels. And last night I came across another website which I think I've seen before called ATS Acoustic. And that one provides um, actual materials for me to build my own panels and not just buy pre-made panels, which you know, it's really, you're probably saving maybe $20, $30 off of each panel by doing it yourself versus just paying for one outright. So when that time comes, I'll figure out how much time and money I have and which one will win in the fight against, am I going to make more customized panels or am I just going to buy some from a company and have them shipped here? and then install them along the walls. So that's just some of the things I've been thinking about this week. Uh, as we draw closer and closer to the end of the studio build, and uh, it's getting really exciting, it really is. So as you can see, we have the booth over here. Let me move the camera just a little bit. Okay, not too bad. So there's our booth. We have not drywalled the actual booth yet. Uh, we're still trying to get these small strips along the, uh, the wall and the back part of the room over here, which is the entryway. So you can see there's a, there's a small strip right here, whoop, right there, that we still got to do. And um, still working on the stairwell. That's probably going to happen sometime tomorrow. Uh, still lots of drywall left to do. But the main focus is this room and just making sure we get everything prepared and ready. Um, up in this area right here is going to be a mini split, which is going to provide heating and cooling of the area up here which is be great. I think it'll be nice and quiet. I've you know, watched a lot of videos on mini splits and all the benefits that you can receive from having one in your space. And uh, I think it's gonna be a good solution for HVAC up here in the studio. So, um, still have a bathroom framed out in the garage area. But that's kind of secondary right now. Uh, the main thing is just getting this space up here finished and complete so we can start having sessions up here and doing more YouTube videos for me to teach here on YouTube and on my website. So that's all exciting stuff. And here in about, um, I don't have a watch on, but here in about an hour, I am going to drive about an hour away to pick up a new piece of gear for the studio. So I'm not quite sure if I want to reveal that just yet, uh, but be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you'll be notified when I do reveal the big purchase I'm about to make. So it's pretty exciting. It'll keep adding to the workflow that I have here in the studio, which is primarily a digital studio. Uh, over the years, I've slowly learned that um, digital is very convenient, okay? I know we're not, you know, recording the analog tape anymore. I don't have a huge, you know, 34, 48 channel console that I'm running everything through. Um, everything's pretty much digital. You know, I have an audio interface that has great preamps that I can run all the microphones through. It has plenty of line inputs that I can run pianos and stuff like that. And I am also utilizing uh, amp simulation hardware such as the headrest pedal board 
HX Stomp. I have a blue guitar amp one that has a great sounding record out on it. So any band, any solo artist, any songwriter that has certain tones they want to hear on their song, I can create that from the hardware that I have, uh, which is digital. And that just makes it really easy and convenient to dial in sounds, save those sounds, and I can punch in things later after a session if I need to, or you know, just recall all those tones uh, at the drop of a hat. So just makes things really convenient. And that might lead you to uh, the big reveal purchase that I'm gonna be making today. It has to do with, well, you're just gonna have to find out, okay? I think it's gonna be more fun to uh, hold on to that secret just a little bit longer. So anyway, let me get in front of the light here. Because uh, when you change light, it changes the uh, the skin tones. It's just not all that great. So what has this happened this week? Uh, watch a lot of sports, obviously. Uh, basketball games have been great. Football games have been great. Uh, here it's Sunday afternoon. So as you know, here in America, uh, we are going to be watching some classic teams go head to head, and uh, so that's, that's fun to relax and just check those out and you know root for your favorite team, and uh, hopefully your team will win. So, so that's really about it. So um, I'm going to put in another clip here showing you the before and the after of what the sound was before the drywall, and then the sound after the drywall. Okay, so it's actually a pretty big difference, right? Um, it's very interesting when we started just putting the first initial few, uh, you know, layers of drywall up on the ceiling here that you could definitely hear some flutter echo going on. But as we started adding more and more drywall, I think all those little echoes are, you know, dissipating in a nice way. And it's very reverberant in here right now, obviously, as you can hear. And I'm just using the iPhone, uh, you know, microphone. I'm not using like an external mic or anything. So I know the audio quality is not the greatest right now, but I'm really not trying to go all out and, and uh, you know, do, do tons of editing for this series. I'm just trying to make it really raw, really uh, personable. And, you know, the audio will always get better uh, in future videos, but for now, just run and gun, grab a phone, turn it on, hit record, and just start talking. So that's pretty much what's going on there. I have gone on to Prime Acoustics website and recreated the dimensions of this room just to get a feel for how things would look if I had, you know, certain bass traps, maybe a certain cloud over my head, over the desk area. Um, you know, some uh, first reflection point uh, panels along the side walls here. And possibly, since this is going to be a big open area uh, with a glass, you know, sliding glass door, I might possibly have some panels on feet that I can move behind the mixing position. That will help, I think, that should help with uh, any weird reflection stuff or just uh, certain frequencies going the full length of the room. And you know, that needs to be dampened. That needs to be uh, killed a little bit. And just covering the glass behind me with some panels or maybe some heavy curtains over the glass door, something like that would just help in the mixing process and uh, you know, making sure the sound is right in the room. Cause obviously, I designed, I technically designed this room. I didn't reach out to a really expensive company and paid thousands of dollars just to get advice on proper room design and stuff like that because, you know, this was already a built garage. It was already framed out. I just had to kind of work with, you know, I had to work within the confines of 
the framing that I had. So obviously I had a little bit of leeway in the size of the booth and the position of the booth versus going with a split design and having possibly, you know, like a 10 to 11 foot wide control room and maybe a 12 to 13 foot wide tracking room. I felt like that was a little too confined, a little, um, it just wasn't as open feeling as I like in this room right now. So, you know, there's all kinds of things you can consider when you're building your own studio. And if you're in a house and you just have a room to work with, then you just have to make the best of it. And I think you can with, you know, proper treatment, proper placement of panels and, you know, speaker position and all that different stuff. So, um, I have definitely learned a lot over the last few months of reading books, watching YouTube videos on different studio designs and just different layouts and whatnot. But I think for the purpose of this room right here, it's going to be a great room to have a full band in here. Uh, you know, drums, bass, guitars, uh, vocal, acoustic instruments in the ISO booth. And everyone's going to be able to see each other and connect with each other visually and musically. And uh, yeah, we're going to make some music in here, folks, and it's going to be great. So like I said before, if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. There's a lot of exciting things happening on the channel this year. And I think I'm about 50 subs away from 10,000, which is also really exciting. But I don't want that number to be a main focus. I'm just here to teach and to help guide and, and inspire. And if you like what I do here on the channel, then be sure to share it. Click on the links below in the description so you can help support the channel by purchasing things through Amazon or Sweetwater as those are affiliate links and I get a little bit of kickback. I mean, very, very tiny, but every little bit helps when you do buy something through those links. So I appreciate everyone for watching, for subscribing, and leaving your comments and questions and kind regards and just everything for just being great. So I am Dr. McFarland. I will see you in the next video. Keep rocking.